Hi, I'm Daniel, an engineer over here at Statsig. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to use Statsig to set up and run experiments. Let's take a look at our simple rock paper scissors game and see how we can add a Statsig experiment to it. Here we have our demo game. Right now the buttons are just text. Now say we have the hypothesis that showing emojis instead of text on these buttons would encourage people to play more. Let's run through how we would set up an experiment to prove this hypothesis. Right now, our project has no experiments, so let's create one. First, we navigate to the experiments page and click create new. Then in the dialog that appears, we can give our experiment a name. Let's simply enter button text experiment and click create. Note that spaces are allowed, but we will automatically convert the given name into an ID format. Our experiment has now been created. Let's run through a few key areas of the experiments page. At the top here, we have our setup checklist. This is to help guide us through the setup process and ensure that we have completed all the necessary steps. Next, we have our experiment's scorecard. Here we can include our hypothesis as well as the primary and secondary metrics we expect to impact with this experiment. Now these settings are optional, but they can help us keep focused on the original hypothesis when it comes time to review our experiment. Let's enter a brief hypothesis here and select the game played event as the primary metric we are intending to move. For our secondary metric, let's select DAO and daily stickiness as metrics we want to keep an eye on. The next section is where we define our experiment groups. By default, there are two evenly split groups, test and control. Let's add the parameters of our experiment to these groups. The experiment parameters are what we will be changing between our test and control groups. So for this experiment, we will have three parameters. For our control group, we will use the default values rock, paper, and scissors. But for our test group, we will instead use emojis to represent each move. This way, when a user loads our game, they will either see the text-based labels if they are in the control group, or the emoji-based ones if they are in the test group. With these changes made, we can now save and start our experiment. Excellent, our experiment setup is now complete. Let's move over to our game code and see how we can implement this. First, we will want to get the experiment object for our current user. This can be achieved through the Statsig SDK by calling statsig.getExperiment and handing in the name of our experiment. Let's now update our buttons to correctly display our experiment values. To do this, we will call the get method on the experiment object we retrieved earlier. The get method takes two arguments. First, the name of the parameter that we want to get. And second, a default value that we can fall back to if the user is offline or not allocated to an experiment group. And that's it. We can now refresh our game and see our experiment values being used. We have set up our game to use a random user ID for each load, so we can refresh a couple times to verify that we are getting a mix of test and control values. Each user will have a 50% chance of being in test or control. One handy feature to check when we are setting up our experiments is the Diagnostics tab. Let's head back to the Statsig console and check out the events being sent to us from the game. Here we can see our users are being exposed to test and control groups in real time. This can be extremely useful when we are verifying that experiments are working as expected. Okay, we have pushed our experiment into production and have been collecting results for a few days. Now comes the time to review these results. For this, we'll visit the Pulse Results tab on the experiments page. Here, our data is aggregated on a daily basis. We can see the difference in our primary metric game played for each of the experiment groups. Looking at these results, we can see that our hypothesis was right. Users did prefer to click the emoji icons rather than the text-based ones. With this, we can now ship our experiment and clean up our code. By shipping our test group, users will all start to receive the test values. And that's it. That's everything you need to run an experiment on Statsig. If you still need help, you can check out our documentation at docs.statsig.com or if you'd prefer, you can come join us on Slack, where we are happy to answer any of your questions. Thanks for watching.